I'm Luisa Winters and I'd like to take you through motion effects in Premiere Pro CC. This is the second of four videos that cover this topic. In this video, I will cover basic keyframes. Keyframing is when we assign a specific value to a particular property of a clip at a specific point in time. How it works is that you have at least two separate keyframes or specific values at specific point in time, and then Premiere Pro interpolates between these two or more values to produce animation. Let's try it with this clip here. If you want to follow along, you may do so with any clip that you may have in your project. Create a sequence and let's do it. Select the clip and go to the Effect Controls panel. Expand the Motion property and globally change the value of scale. As we saw in the last video, what that means is that we change the scale value, but will not keyframe it. So for as long as the clip is playing, the scale will remain constant. In my case, I will change the value to 20%. But you may find that using a different value will work better for your particular frame size. Now let's keyframe the position value. We can do that by simply clicking on this little stopwatch here to the left of the word position. Clicking here means that we will make changes in time possible. We are enabling the animation. As you can see in this mini representation of the timeline, there is a diamond shaped icon at the point in time where the playhead is. This is the visual representation of the keyframe. In this case, this particular keyframe indicates the beginning of the interpolation. If by any reason you do not see this mini representation of the timeline, please click on this little triangle here. This will toggle the display of the timeline view in this panel. What we need to do now is to move the playhead to a different point in time. We can now change the value of the property being keyframed, in this case position, and a new keyframe gets created. In some programs, you need to create the keyframe first and then change the value of the property. However, in Premiere Pro, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is to change the value of the property being keyframed and Premiere Pro will add the keyframe for you automatically. No need to create the keyframe first and then change the value of the property. If we play the timeline, we get interpolation of the clip so that it moves from left to right. Please notice that the keyframe is two different colors. The darker color signifies that there is no interpolation on that side. So, for the first keyframe, the clip is not coming from anywhere, and for the last keyframe, the clip is not going anywhere. If we had a keyframe in the middle, it would show lighter on both sides. If we find the interpolation, or the motion in this case, to be too slow, we can move the keyframes closer together in time. To move the keyframe, just click and drag it. For faster interpolation, move the keyframes closer together in time, and for slower interpolation, move the keyframes farther apart in time. To select all of the keyframes, click on the name of the property being keyframed. You can also copy and paste keyframes by using Ctrl or Command C and then paste using Ctrl or Command V. In addition to using copy and paste, you can duplicate the keyframes by selecting them, pressing and holding the Alt or Option key and then dragging the keyframe. As you can see, this is a quick and easy way of duplicating the keyframes. There is also a keyframe navigator here in the Effect Controls panel. It will look like this, two little triangles with a diamond in the middle. If you click on the left triangle, the playhead moves to the previous keyframe. And if you click on the right one, the playhead moves to the next keyframe. If you click on the diamond, you can add or delete a keyframe depending if the playhead is at the point in time where there is a keyframe or not. I recommend that you use the keyframe navigator if you want to adjust the value of an existing keyframe. If you move the playhead by dragging, you might not really hit the keyframe 
and then when you adjust the value, you will really be making a new keyframe instead of adjusting the value of the existing one. That is easy to do, especially if you have a long interpolation. Even if you have two different keyframes, they will be so close to one another that they will look like just one keyframe. You can also ensure that you are really on top of the keyframe if you press and hold the Shift key as you move the playhead here in the Effect Controls panel and you will see how the playhead snaps to existing keyframes. Any property that has a stopwatch to the left of its name can be keyframed, exactly the same way that we keyframed the position of this clip. The next video will cover spatial interpolation of keyframes. See you then.